NASA planned to return humans to the moon in 2025, but delays pushed Artemis 3 to 2027 and reopened the race, thrusting SpaceX's Starship into the global spotlight. Now industrial might, political pressure, and a new breakthrough could mean SpaceX lands Starship on the moon sooner than anyone expected. If they succeed, the balance of power in space and the Artemis mission's fate may shift overnight. But what did SpaceX do that's changing every calculation? At the edge of the Texas coast, Starbase comes alive before sunrise. Towering shells of stainless steel catch the first light as welders spark beneath their shadows, every shift feeding a relentless 24-hour build cycle. The air hums with machinery and the steady rhythm of cranes swinging booster segments into place. At the heart of the complex, the Mechazilla Tower stands over 140 meters tall, its twin steel arms poised like a giant's hands. These arms, each as long as a city bus, move with surprising precision, rotating, rising, and lowering in a carefully choreographed dance. Teams of engineers in hard hats and flame-resistant jackets move between rocket sections, their breath visible in the dawn chill, focused on the next assembly or inspection. The night shift hands off to the day as the Star Factory's doors roll open, releasing another convoy of freshly welded rings. Inside, robotic welders trace perfect seams along curved metal, while rotating platforms spin entire rocket sections for inspection. On the pad, the Mechazilla arms grip a super heavy booster, lowering it onto the launch mount with only centimeters to spare. The process repeats day after day, as new prototypes line up for their turn on the test stand or launch pad. Each operation is timed to the minute, with no pause between stacking, fueling, and recovery rehearsals. Workers describe the pace as relentless, but the sense of purpose is unmistakable. For many, this is more than a job, it's a chance to shape the future, one weld and one shift at a time. The scale of Starbase, and the human effort behind it, turns ambition into hardware, setting the stage for everything that follows. In March 2024, NASA issued a formal notice in the Federal Register. The human landing system contract was open for new bids. The decision arrived just as the Artemis schedule slipped further, with Artemis 3 now officially pushed to no earlier than mid-2027. Interim Administrator Sean Duffy addressed a packed press room, warning, we cannot afford to fall behind in the next era of lunar exploration. His words echoed across headlines and into the halls of Congress as lawmakers demanded answers on the pace of America's return to the moon. Behind the scenes, the competitive landscape shifted. Blue Origin, once sidelined, returned with a hydrogen-oxygen lander backed by Lockheed Martin and Draper. Their approach favored proven hardware and a smaller, modular design, promising lower risk and fewer refueling launches. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Starship HLS faced new scrutiny. Every milestone, tank insulation, propellant transfer, booster recovery, now doubled as a test not just of engineering, but of national resolve. International pressure sharpened the stakes. In Beijing, the China National Space Administration released new footage of the Long March 10 heavy lift rocket under assembly, alongside renderings of a future lunar base near the South Pole. Official statements set 2030 as the target for a crewed Chinese landing. U.S. intelligence and policy analysts tracked each milestone. Chang'e 7 and 8, scheduled through 2028, thus the 28 would lay groundwork for human-rated missions. For NASA, these developments were more than symbolic. The risk of losing the lead in lunar exploration turned procurement deadlines into matters of global strategy. The rebids set off a flurry of technical reviews and proposal updates. SpaceX, Blue Origin, and other hopefuls raced to align their designs with NASA's evolving requirements. With every announcement, the calendar grew tighter, and the pressure on SpaceX's Starbase intensified. Hardware alone would no longer decide the outcome. The next phase of the moon race would be fought on contracts, milestones, and the shifting priorities of a world watching from afar. April 20th, 2023 brought a moment that would test SpaceX's momentum like never before. The world watched as Starship's first integrated flight thundered off the pad at Boca Chica, engines firing in a synchronized roar. Just four minutes into flight, trouble struck. 
Several Raptor engines failed, the booster lost control, and the stack began to tumble high above the Gulf of Mexico. Seconds later, the automated flight termination system activated, ending the mission in a spray of debris and vapor. The launch pad itself was left scarred with shattered concrete and sand blasted deep into the wetlands beyond the fence. The fallout was immediate. The FAA imposed a mandatory stand down, halting all further Starship launches. Investigators from SpaceX, NASA, and the FAA combed through telemetry, video, and debris, tracing the mishap to hydraulic ruptures and engine anomalies. The investigation demanded a full safety audit with new environmental reviews and technical remediations before any return to flight. For the next seven months, Starbase's launch tower stood silent, prototypes grounded as repairs and reviews unfolded. Online reactions split between awe and anxiety. Clips of the tumbling rocket and pad destruction flooded social media. Some called it a necessary step in rapid development, others questioned the wisdom of such high-risk testing. Engineers faced the hard reality that every failure, no matter how spectacular, carried real costs, lost time, lost hardware, and a growing sense of scrutiny. In the aftermath, the mood at Starbase shifted. The excitement of relentless progress gave way to a more sober appreciation of risk. Each future launch would now carry the weight of this lesson, shaping how SpaceX approached every milestone on the path back to the moon. Starship's journey to the moon depends on a sequence of tightly linked steps, each with its own margin for error. After liftoff, the super heavy booster lifts the stack to roughly 75 kilometers above Earth. At that altitude, the booster detaches and returns to the launch site while, bar dem while the upper stage Starship fires its six Raptor engines and pushes into orbit. But reaching orbit is only the beginning. To carry enough propellant for a lunar landing and return, Starship must be refueled in space. This process requires a fleet of tanker starships, anywhere from 8 to 16 launches per mission, depending on the final lander mass and the efficiency of each transfer. Each tanker must rendezvous and dock with the lunar starship in low Earth orbit, transferring supercooled methane and liquid oxygen through vacuum insulated couplings. Every connection, every transfer, and every orbital maneuver introduces a new variable. NASA's risk matrices list these as single point failures. If one tanker misses its window, or if a leak or boil off occurs, the entire mission could be delayed or aborted. Until these steps are proven in flight, the path to a crude lunar landing remains uncertain. Star Factory's footprint has doubled since 2023, with new megabay and gigabay expansions rising at both Boca Chica and Cape Canaveral. Inside these hangars, robotic arms weld steel rings with millimeter precision, while rotating platforms speed up inspections that once took days. The pace is unrelenting. Output of Starship sections and super heavy boosters has more than doubled in the past year, with barges now hauling finished segments along the Gulf Coast to keep assembly lines fed. At McGregor, Texas, the test stands thunder with the arrival of Raptor 3. This engine, forged from fewer parts and built for reliability, has already pushed past 250 metric tons of thrust. An improvement engineers describe as essential for lunar missions. A Raptor test engineer, eyes fixed on telemetry, calls out numbers as the chamber pressure climbs higher than any previous run. Each test shortens the path to flight, with failure studied and fixes applied before the next engine leaves the line. On the floor, Welders and technicians work shoulder to shoulder through 12-hour shifts, many drawn from local apprenticeship programs. One welder, still learning the trade, says, You land, you grind, you build. It's not just a job, it's history. The human drive behind each shift and the scale of the machines they build are what makes SpaceX's cadence possible. Every booster and engine that rolls out brings the moon a little closer. Each new Starship variant, whether it's a change in engine design, flight profile, or even a minor structural update, triggers a fresh round of regulatory scrutiny. The Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, stands as the gatekeeper for every launch from Boca Chica. 
Before a single Raptor engine can ignite, engineers must submit detailed technical data, hazard analyses, and evidence that public safety and environmental risks are managed for the specific vehicle configuration. If a change is deemed significant, the process can stretch for months. After the April 2023 test flight failure, the FAA imposed a stand down that lasted nearly five months. Investigators poured over telemetry, pad debris, and wildlife reports before clearing the next attempt. Environmental reviews add another layer, especially with Boca Chica's proximity to protected habitats. A new or expanded environmental assessment can take more than a year, as seen in the 2022 review that required 75 mitigation measures. Licensing cycles now shape the entire Starship schedule, sometimes moving faster than expected, but often slowing to a crawl as every document, diagram, or document, diagram and safety case is reviewed and stamped. The path to the moon runs not just through engineering bays, but through offices lined with paperwork and policy binders. In 2024, NASA formally reopened its human landing system competition, citing schedule slips that pushed Artemis 3's first crewed landing target to no earlier than 2027. SpaceX responded by doubling Starship manufacturing output and testing the new Raptor 3 engine, which now exceeds 250 tons of thrust. The documentary has shown how ship-to-ship -ship cryogenic refueling, multi-tanker launches, and strict FAA licensing remain critical hurdles. Despite several test mishaps, like the April 2023 flight termination, SpaceX has accelerated hardware progress and workforce expansion at Starbase. Yet, key questions persist. The cryogenic transfer system needed for lunar missions is still unproven, and every Starship variant requires fresh regulatory approval, adding months to the timeline. Public documents confirm the race with China is driving urgency, but much of Starship's final engineering data remains proprietary. What is clear is that NASA and SpaceX are reshaping what's possible for lunar access, using hard-won lessons and relentless iteration. The next step depends on overcoming technical and regulatory barriers, each one documented, each one real.